In this tutorial, we're going to take what we've learned so far and we're going to use it to create a factorial solving program. Now, the factorial of any number is defined as, if, it, if we take the factorial of 5, it will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. <laughs> this keyboard is messed up. I've got a new keyboard and figuring out where each all, all the keys are is a little bit of a pain. So that is the factorial of 5, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. So we're going to build a program using a while loop that will solve four factorials. Now we need the starting number, which is equal to 5, and we need the result, a variable for the result, integer result and we're going to just set this by default to 1 because the minimum value for the factorial of any number whether it is positive excuse me whether it is positive or whether it is 0 uh, is still 1 so even the factorial of 0 is 1 it doesn't make any sense to me but I did not create mathematics so go complain to someone else so this is how the while loop will, will work while start is greater than 0 it's going to multiply the result by the starting number and assign that to result and then it's going to rem it's going to decrease the starting number by 1 until it gets to 0 in which case the loop will stop and we'll ha we'll have our result so result equals result times start and start is equal to start minus 1 now here's one thing you should know People have been doing the decrementing, decreasing by 1, and increasing by 1 for loops so much that they've built a special operator just for doing it. To take an integer or a floating point number, a double, and add 1 to its value, you do plus plus. That will add 1. To remove 1, to decrease it by 1, you do minus minus. So in our case, we can do start minus minus, and that works in every programming language, and everyone knows what it means. And you know what it means now, so. Now we have our loop, and if we print out result, this should give us our answer, which should be 120. And result. And let's see what this gives us. result is 120. Now let's give it something like 10. That'll give us a big answer. 3, what is that, 3,628,800. And if we give it 0, it gives us 1, which is exactly how the mathematics defines it, so I don't know why that is. But And 1 should also give us 1. There we go. So now we have a while loop that will calculate the factorial for any starting number. But here's the thing. What if you want to calculate two factorials? Well, we could copy this entire thing and run it again. But who would want to copy and paste all that code? It would be a huge pain to copy and paste this entire piece of code every single time you need to run the while loop and get the factorial. So in C, there's something called a function. Now, a function has three parts. The first part is the data type that it will return. And in our example, we need to use an integer data type because the factorial returns an integer. So int, there we go. Now we need to give this function a name, just like we give a variable a name. It's, it's a bit similar creating variables and creating functions. And so the name of this function will be factorial. And there's, there's the next part is the information that this factorial receives. And now this starting number, that's the information, the only information that our program needs to calculate the factorial. So this, in parentheses, is going to receive an integer variable, and I'm going to call it start. Now, the last part is the code that is run inside of the function. This code can be reused wherever you want in your program, so this is what we're going to do for our factorial program. And again, just like with while loops and with if statements, you put it inside of these braces. 
So we can copy all of this code and put it inside of here. So now it we're going to this function accepts a variable or a value which it will create a variable inside of this function with whatever value you give it and then it will use that variable here and then all it has to do is it has to somehow take the result that it calculates and give it back to the part of the program that called this function and we do that with a keyword called return return and we have to return a value or a variable which are basically the same thing and return result and now the result is of type integer as you can see and this factorial function returns type integer if we used if we returned something that was a floating point number it would not work and it would give us an error so this function in short this function returns an integer its name is factorial it you must give it an integer when you use the function and it we're here will return the result so we can get rid of all of this now and now what we're going to do is we're going to call this function and this is how we call the function we type its name factorial and it requires an integer and so in parentheses we give it an integer and we're going to give it the integer of 5 so now when we do this it's going to execute this code and start will have a value of 5 so it will get the factorial of 5 and it will return it but it's not doing doing anything with it it gets the value and it returns it but it doesn't use the value in any way so to use the value that a function returns you have to assign it to a variable and we're going to just call the variable result and we're going to print out the result just like we did last time now let's see what we get let's hope I did everything correctly 120 this did exactly the same thing except that now if we want to do it with 10 we can copy this line we can do run it again and give result the value of the factorial of 10 we didn't have to copy any code and we were able to reuse it with a different value for the starting position however there are a couple of things that you should note about these functions right here we have a variable called result but wait we already have a variable called result up here how does it know what we're talking about well when we call the function this variable result is called a local variable it can only be seen and used by the code that's in these within these braces or in the function this result is completely separate so there's no conflict when you're using the same name multiple times another thing that you should note about functions is that like this function returns an integer well functions can return any type of data you could create a different function that returns a floating point number or a single character or a string and if you wanted to you can also have it accept uh, different types of data here any type will work you can also have it accept multiple types for example let's create a, another function really quickly here uh, this function will be greater and it's going to accept two numbers integer a and integer b just like we learned last time like with the printf function and that is a function just like we call factorial we call printf and it has multiple parameters uh, we have this one has two so we have to give it two integers an integer a and an integer b and this is greater it's going to return one well this is a greater it's going to return the largest integer so this is what we're going to do if a is greater than b we're going to return a else we're going to return b so this one returns the greatest value so int result equals 
greater of 5 and 10. And it should return 10. Result 10. Okay, so functions can accept different numbers of parameters and they can be of different types. They can return uh, different data types and you can call them as many times as you want down here and to use their values you have to assign it to a variable or use it directly in a like a print statement so I could copy this and I could print it directly right here and that will work. Uh, one thing that you may have noticed is that this int main looks pretty much like a function and to tell you the truth it is a function. Uh, main is the name, it returns an integer, although we're not returning anything, which is perfectly fine. We don't have to return anything. And it accepts no information. What happens when you compile your code, when you run your code, it will first start with whatever is in the function called main. If you don't have a main function, it will not be able to run your code. So really, you've been using a function the entire time, but now you know more about functions and how to use them. So congratulations. You now know about functions, which is a pretty complicated part of C, but it has real power. Uh, I'm sure you'll have fun playing around with running your own functions that do some pretty cool stuff. And if you have anything that's really awesome that you create, make sure you post it in the YouTube comments so that I can see it too. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you again next time.